Imagine a place where cultures blend, where nature dances, and where festivities never end. Welcome to Trinidad and Tobago. Tucked away in the southernmost corner of the Caribbean, Trinidad and Tobago is a twin island nation teeming with a vibrant blend of cultures. The islands have soaked up influences from Africa, India, Europe, and the Americas, creating a unique cultural tapestry that's as diverse as it is captivating. In Trinidad, the bustling capital, Port of Spain, hums with life. Walk down Charlotte Street, affectionately known as Chinatown, and you'll see it brimming with energy. It's one of the busiest streets in the city, a testament to the island's melting pot of cultures. But Trinidad and Tobago is not just a cultural haven. It's a paradise for nature lovers too. The islands are blessed with a wealth of natural beauty. From the stunning Maracas Beach to the majestic Maracas Waterfall, every corner is a testament to Mother Nature's artistry. The island of Tobago, with its charming town of Scarborough and the breathtaking Argyle Falls, adds to the allure of this Caribbean paradise. And let's not forget the festivals. Trinidad and Tobago is synonymous with the lively and colorful Trinidad. or festivals, but also its people. The Trinbagonians, as they are fondly known, are warm, welcoming, and full of life. Their love for their homeland is infectious, and you can't help but be swept up in their passion. In this journey, we shall traverse through the heart of this Caribbean paradise, exploring its landmarks, attractions, and the very soul of Trinidad and Tobago. And in the heart of Trinidad's capital, Port of Spain, lies a bustling artery, Charlotte Street, also known as Chinatown. A vibrant microcosm of the city itself, this street pulses with life, a living, breathing entity that never truly sleeps. Here, the air is thick with the tantalizing aromas of street food, a mingling of Caribbean and Chinese flavors that reflects the cultural blend of the city. From the sizzling woks of street vendors cooking up tasty stir fries and spicy jerk chicken, to the mouth-watering scent of freshly baked roti and the sweet, tempting allure of sugarcane juice, the culinary delights of Charlotte Street are a feast for the senses. The street itself is a riot of colors and sounds, with the murmur of patois mixing with the rhythmic beat of soca music, the vibrant chatter of market traders haggling over prices, and the laughter of children playing in the streets. It's a multicultural symphony that embodies the spirit of Trinidad and Tobago, a country that prides itself on its diversity. Walking down Charlotte Street is like stepping into a different world, one where Caribbean warmth meets Chinese practicality, creating a unique blend that is both fascinating and endearing. The street is lined with a variety of shops, from Chinese herbalists and acupuncture clinics to Caribbean bakeries and clothing stores each one adding a different note to the harmonious melody of the street. But it's not just about the food and shopping. Charlotte Street is also home to an array of cultural events, from Chinese New Year celebrations to the vibrant Trinidad and Tobago Carnival, making it a cultural hub that brings people together in a celebration of diversity and unity. As the sun sets, the street is transformed into a kaleidoscope of lights, with the glow from the lanterns illuminating the faces of the people who call this place home. Their smiles a testament to the warmth and hospitality of this Caribbean nation. Charlotte Street, a testament to the multicultural tapestry that is Trinidad and Tobago. Trinidad and Tobago's love for sports resonates in its stadiums the Queen's Park Oval, Hasley Crawford Stadium, and Jean-Pierre Sports Complex. Cricket, the heartbeat of the Caribbean, is more than a sport in Trinidad and Tobago. It's a binding force, a shared passion, a common language. The Queen's Park Oval, the National Cricket Stadium, stands as a testament to this love. A coliseum where cricketing legends are born and unforgettable matches unfold, the Oval is more than just a venue, it's a cradle of dreams. Just a stone's throw away, we find the Hasley Crawford Stadium named after the country's first Olympic gold medalist. 
A tribute to the nation's athletic prowess, this stadium is a hub of energy and competition where local and international athletes push the boundaries of human potential. Not too far off, the Jean-Pierre Sports Complex stands as a beacon of versatility. From netball to boxing, this complex has seen it all. It's a testament to the island's love for diverse sports, a melting pot of athletic endeavors. But the love for sports in Trinidad and Tobago isn't confined to stadiums. It seeps into the streets, beaches and backyards, where children and adults alike engage in friendly matches of football, beach cricket and athletics, turning every corner of the island into an informal sports arena. The islands have also given birth to many sports stalwarts, from cricketer Brian Lara, known for his sublime batting, to sprinter Eto Bolden, a four-time Olympic medalist, the islands have a rich legacy of nurturing world-class athletes. In Trinidad and Tobago, sports serve as a unifying thread, binding diverse cultures and communities. It's a celebration of the island's spirit, a testament to its resilience, and a reflection of its vibrant energy. It's more than a hobby, it's a lifestyle a part of the very fabric of the island's culture. So whether you're a sports enthusiast or a casual observer, the pulsating energy of Trinidad and Tobago sports scene is sure to leave an indelible mark on you. Because in Trinidad and Tobago, sports is not just a pastime, it's a way of life. From the bustling city, we venture to the serene embrace of nature at Maracas Beach and Maracas Waterfall. Imagine a place where the azure sea kisses the golden sandy shores, where the sun paints a masterpiece on the canvas of the sky every evening. This is Maracas Beach, a tranquil haven nestled amidst the vibrant energy of Trinidad and Tobago. The beach is a symphony of natural beauty, playing a melodious tune that resonates with the rhythm of the waves. As the warm tropical breeze whispers through the palm trees, the turquoise waters of the Caribbean Sea lap gently against the shore, creating a mesmerizing contrast against the shimmering sand. But the charm of Maracas doesn't end at the beach. A little journey inland leads us to the Maracas Waterfall, a hidden gem tucked away in the lush greenery. It's a spectacle to behold as the crystal clear water cascades down the rugged mountain face, creating a symphony of sounds that echo through the valley. The waterfall is a testament to the island's unspoiled beauty, a place where time seems to stand still and the hustle and bustle of the world fades into a distant memory. Every element at Maracas, from the whispering palm trees to the gentle waves and the cascading waterfall, contributes to a sense of tranquility that is rare to find. It's a place where you can let your thoughts float away on the sea breeze, where you can listen to the soothing lullaby of the waterfall, where you can soak in the untouched beauty of the Caribbean. Maracas is more than just a beach and a waterfall. It's a sanctuary for the soul, a place that embodies the spirit of Trinidad and Tobago. It's a testament to the island's diverse landscape, a place where you can experience the enchanting allure of the Caribbean, where you can immerse yourself in the natural wonders of the world. Maracas, where nature whispers the tales of Trinidad and Tobago. Crossing over to Tobago, we find ourselves in Scarborough, a town steeped in history and the majestic Argyle Falls. Embark with me on a journey to Scarborough, the capital of Tobago. A town that resonates with the echoes of history, Scarborough is a testament to the island's rich past. The town is a delightful blend of old and new where colonial-era buildings rub shoulders with modern architecture, creating a unique amalgamation of times past and present. The Fort King George, perched high on a hill overlooking the town, is a silent sentinel of the island's history. Constructed in the late 18th century, it stands as a sturdy bastion of Tobago's colonial past. As we wander through the town, the air is filled with a harmonious blend of aromas from local eateries, offering delicacies that are a tantalizing fusion of African, Indian and Creole influences. The bustling Scarborough Market is a vibrant showcase of the island's agricultural bounty, with stalls brimming with fresh fruits, vegetables and spices. Just a short drive from Scarborough, we find the crown jewel of Tobago's natural wonders, the Argyle Waterfall. Standing at approximately 175 feet tall, it is the highest waterfall on the island. 
a symphony of cascading water set amidst lush tropical vegetation, the Argyle Falls is a paradise for nature lovers. The journey to the falls is as breathtaking as the destination itself. A trek through a verdant rainforest teeming with a rich diversity of flora and fauna. As the water cascades down from the verdant heights, it forms a series of natural pools, each more enticing than the last. The cool, clear water is an irresistible invitation to take a refreshing dip. The waterfall is a sanctuary of tranquility, a place where one can truly lose oneself in the beauty of nature. In Tobago, every corner is a postcard, every moment a memory. The enchanting town of Scarborough and the majestic Argyle Falls are just two of the many treasures waiting to be discovered on this vibrant Caribbean island. Back to Trinidad, we delve into the industrial heart of the island, Makoya. Nestled in the eastern region of Trinidad, Makoya is a bustling hub of commerce and industry. This is where the island's economic pulse quickens, where the rhythm of progress is a constant hum. Makoya's industrial park is a beehive of activity, with numerous businesses contributing to the robust economy of Trinidad and Tobago. From manufacturing plants to warehouses, from distribution centers to logistics hubs, Makoya is a microcosm of Trinidad's economic diversity. It's not just about the heavy machinery and the ceaseless grind of industry, though. It's about the people who keep the wheels of commerce turning, from the shift workers clocking in before dawn to the executives strategizing in boardrooms. But Makoya is not just a concrete jungle of factories and warehouses. It's a place where the industrial landscape seamlessly blends with the natural environment. Amid the bustle of industry, you'll find pockets of greenery, where the island's tropical foliage offers a refreshing contrast to the steel and concrete. There are places in Makoya where the chirping of birds is as audible as the hum of machinery, where the scent of the sea mingles with the aroma of fresh coffee from the local roasteries. It's a testament to Trinidad's commitment to sustainable development, to striking a balance between economic progress and environmental preservation. At the heart of Makoya's industrial park, you'll find the Center of Excellence, a state-of-the-art conference and sports facility that serves as a symbol of Makoya's progress. It's a place where business and pleasure meet, where deals are made on the soccer pitch and in the conference rooms, where the spirit of competition is as strong in the boardroom as it is on the field. Makoya is a testament to Trinidad's ability need to preserve its natural beauty. It's a place where industry and nature coexist, where the rhythm of progress dances in harmony with the melody of the tropics. Makoya, where industry and nature coexist in harmony, no tale of Trinidad and Tobago can be complete without the mention of its soul-stirring carnivals. Ah, the carnival. It's an explosion of color, a symphony of sound, a dance of joy that sweeps across the islands like a tropical breeze. This annual extravaganza is the heartbeat of Trinidad and Tobago, a pulsating rhythm that courses through the veins of the people and the landscape itself. Imagine, if you will, a sea of vibrant hues as participants don elaborate costumes, each more spectacular than the last. Feathers, sequins and beads catch the sunlight, turning the streets into a living, moving kaleidoscope. It's a visual feast that leaves one speechless and wide-eyed, a spectacle that defies description. But the carnival is more than just eye candy. It's a symphony that resonates deep within your soul. The air is thick with the infectious beat of soca music, a fusion of soul and calypso that forms the heart and soul of the festivities. Steel drums, guitars and voices blend into a harmonious melody that compels even the most reluctant of feet to tap along. And then there's the energy, the pure, unadulterated joy that seems to permeate every corner of Trinidad and Tobago during the carnival. It's an energy that's infectious, seeping into your bones and making your heart race with excitement. It's a joy that's palpable, a happiness that's tangible, a euphoria that's contagious. The carnival is not just a festival, it's a way of life. A time when the islands shed their everyday garb and clothe themselves in jubilation and joy. It's a time when the people of Trinidad and Tobago come together, united by their love for their culture, their music and their islands. It's a time when the spirit of the islands shines brightest. A time when life itself seems to take a back seat to the celebration, the carnival, a testament to the spirit of Trinidad and Tobago, a celebration of life itself. 
As our journey nears its end, we take a moment to reflect on the essence of Trinidad and Tobago, a tale of two islands, each with its unique charm and character, yet bound together in a harmonious dance of culture and tradition. The bustling Charlotte Street, or as it's fondly known, Chinatown in Port of Spain, a testament to the cultural diversity that thrives in the heart of Trinidad. The hum of activity, the vibrant colors, the tantalizing aromas, a sensory overload that is as delightful as it is mesmerizing. And then there's the sports enthusiasm that sweeps across the islands, the thwack of the cricket ball at the Queen's Park Oval, the roar of the crowd at Hasley Crawford Stadium, the adrenaline rush at the Jean-Pierre Sports Complex. These are the places where the spirit of sportsmanship and camaraderie comes alive, a testament to the island's passion for all things athletic. But the islands aren't just about the hustle and bustle of city life and sports. They're a haven of natural beauty as well. The golden sands of Maracas Beach, the cascading waters of the Maracas and Argyle waterfalls, the lush greenery of Makoya. These are the places where you can truly connect with nature, where the rhythm of the waves and the whisper of the wind tell tales of the island's rich biodiversity. And let's not forget the vibrant festivals, the most iconic of which is the Trinidad and Tobago Carnival. An explosion of color, music and dance, it's a celebration of life in its most joyous form. A testament to the island's inherent ability to turn the ordinary into the extraordinary, to find joy and beauty in the simplest of things. The industrial prowess of Trinidad and Tobago also shines through, particularly in Makoya, a hub of commerce and industry, demonstrating the island's ability to balance modernity with tradition, progress with preservation. Trinidad and Tobago, a symphony of cultures, a canvas of natural beauty, a celebration of life. Until next time, fare thee well.
Imagine a place where the sun kisses the ocean, where the breezes whisper tales of spices and flavors. Welcome to Tobago, a culinary paradise waiting to be explored. As the sun rises over the Caribbean Sea, it paints a picture of a day filled with tantalizing flavors and culinary exploration. In every nook and cranny of this island, a story of food unfolds. The food scene in Tobago is a vibrant tapestry woven with threads of history, culture, and an undying love for good food. The cuisine here is as diverse as the island itself, a fusion of African, Indian, Chinese, and Creole influences that create a flavorful symphony. From the humble food stalls lining the streets to the luxury dining establishments, each place serves up a slice of Tobago's rich culinary heritage. Take a stroll down the bustling food markets and you'll find yourself amidst a riot of colors and aromas. Freshly caught fish, tropical fruits, aromatic spices and local delicacies. It's a sensory overload that's hard to resist. Now, imagine tucking into a plate of crab and dumplings, a local favorite, at a quaint seaside shack. The succulent crab meat paired with fluffy dumplings all slathered in a rich curry sauce is the stuff dreams are made of. Or maybe you're in the mood for something a bit more refined. How about a candlelit dinner at a high-end restaurant where the chef's innovative dishes redefine Tobagonian cuisine? The food scene here is not just about eating. It's a celebration of culture, tradition and community. You can witness this in the chulha, an earth and clay stove fueled by wood that infuses the food with a unique smoky flavor. Whether it's bread, curries or the local favorite coconut bake, cooking on the chula is a cherished tradition that continues to thrive. From the spicy green mango curry to the comforting dal roti, the crispy follery to the hearty chula curry chicken, Tobago offers a diverse palette of flavors that will leave you craving for more. So buckle up fellow food enthusiasts. We're about to embark on a gastronomic adventure through Tobago the heart of Tobago's culinary scene beats on its bustling streets, where food carts and roadside stalls serve up mouth-watering delights. In every corner and alleyway, the sizzle of frying and the tantalizing aroma of spices fill the air. You'll find the island's street food scene pulsating with energy, dishing out some of Tobago's most iconic dishes. Among these, the revered crab and dumplings stand out, a hearty dish that captures the island's spirit. Plump crabs seasoned to perfection are nestled into fluffy dumplings, creating a symphony of flavors that dance on the palate. Then there's the infamous bacon shark, a beloved street food that has become synonymous with Tobago. Picture this, a generous chunk of crispy fried shark tucked into a bake, a type of local bread slathered with an array of condiments. It's a dish that packs a punch, mirroring the vibrant energy of Tobago's streets. Of course, we can't forget about folori, those little balls of split pea dough, deep fried to golden perfection. They're usually served with sweet and tangy tamarind sauce or spicy mango chutney, a delightful contrast to the savory goodness of the follery. These bite-sized morsels are more than just a snack. They're a testament to Tobago's culinary ingenuity. These street foods aren't just about satiating hunger, they're an integral part of Tobago's culture, reflecting the island's rich history. The flavors and techniques used in their preparation have been passed down through generations, each dish telling a story of Tobago's past. They embody the resilience and creativity of the Tobagonian people, who have always found ways to turn simple ingredients into gastronomic marvels. But the true beauty of Tobago's street food lies in its power to bring people together. It's common to see locals and tourists alike lining up at food stalls, engaged in friendly banter as they await their turn. Food, after all, is a universal language, and in Tobago, it's spoken with love and passion. Street food in Tobago isn't just a quick bite. It's a cultural experience that leaves you craving more. Now, let's drift away from the streets and onto the sparkling Caribbean waters to a unique dining experience, the Tiki Craft. Yes, you heard it right. This isn't your average eatery. It's a restaurant and bar that floats on the ocean, a place that marries the freshness of the sea with the richness of Tobagonian cuisine. At the heart of the Tiki Crafts offering is an array of seafood dishes that are as fresh as they come. Here, the ocean doesn't just provide the view, but the very ingredients that make your meal. Imagine tasting the sweet succulents of crab caught just hours before, paired with fluffy dumplings cooked to perfection. Or picture yourself indulging in a platter of grilled fish, 
its tender flesh infused with the tangy zest of local spices and herbs. But Tiki Craft isn't just about seafood. It's about the experience of dining on the open water, surrounded by the stunning beauty of Tobago. Imagine the gentle bob of the craft beneath you, the warm sun on your skin, the slight saltiness of the ocean breeze, and the sound of waves lapping against the hull, all combining to create a symphony of sensations that elevate your dining experience to something truly magical. As you sip on your tropical cocktail, take a moment to appreciate the view. Gaze at the horizon where the azure sky meets the turquoise sea and let the tranquility of the scene wash over you. This is what dining at the Tiki Craft is all about, not just the food but the entire sensory experience. What's more, the Tiki Craft is a testament to Tobagonian hospitality. The staff, always with a warm smile, are ready to serve you, ensuring your experience is as delightful as the view that surrounds you. So if you're seeking a meal that's not just about satisfying your taste buds, but also about immersing yourself in the natural beauty of Tobago, the Tiki Craft is a must visit. A meal at the Tiki Craft isn't just about food, it's about enjoying Tobago's breathtaking beauty in a way you'll never forget. From the ocean, we move to the luxurious side of Tobago, where fine dining restaurants offer a gastronomic experience like no other. In the heart of Tobago, you'll find a handful of exceptional dining spots, each one an exquisite blend of local and international flavors. These culinary havens are a testament to Tobago's bountiful natural produce and the creativity of its chefs. Imagine tucking into a meal that tells a story where each bite is a celebration of Tobago's rich heritage. One such place is the Tiki Craft. Here they take the humble crab and dumplings, a local favorite, and elevate it to a gourmet level. The crab, succulent and fresh from the ocean, is paired with fluffy dumplings that melt in your mouth. The dish is a testament to the fusion of tradition and innovation. Then there's chulha, a unique dining experience that takes you back in time. The food here is cooked over an earthen clay stove fueled by wood, infusing every dish with a distinct smoky flavor. They serve an array of dishes from coconut bake to green mango curry, each one bursting with flavors that are both familiar and excitingly new. It's not just about the food though. These restaurants also offer an ambiance that's as exquisite as the dishes they serve. Imagine dining under the stars, with the soft glow of lanterns illuminating your table and the gentle hum of the ocean in the background. It's an experience that's as much about the atmosphere as it is about the food. And let's not forget the creativity with which these chefs use local ingredients. From the sweet tang of a green mango to the hearty goodness of a dal roti, every dish is a testament to the island's bountiful produce. Whether it's a serving of baked chicken, curry duck, or a delectable chulha curry chicken, every dish is a celebration of Tobago's culinary landscape. Fine dining in Tobago is more than just a meal. It's a symphony of flavors that plays a beautiful melody in your mouth. Let's journey back in time now to a traditional Tobagonian kitchen where the chulha, an earthen clay stove, is the star. Imagine the crackling of burning wood, the aroma of spices wafting through the air, and the warmth of a fire heating an earthen clay stove. This is the chulha, the heart of Tobagonian traditional cooking. But it's not just about the fire and the clay, it's the way this humble stove transforms simple ingredients into dishes that are rich, complex and deeply satisfying. Take, for instance, the green mango curry. This is a dish that sings with the flavours of the island, the tartness of the green mangoes, the punch of the curry spices and the subtle smokiness imparted by the chula all come together to create a dish that's as vibrant and diverse as Tobago itself. Then we have the chula curry chicken. Marinated in a symphony of spices and slow cooked over the chulha, this dish is a testament to the patience and skill of Tobagonian cooks. The result? A chicken that's tender, juicy and infused with a smoky flavour that only a wood-fired stove can provide. But it's not all about curries. There's also the coconut bake, a traditional bread that's as versatile as it is delicious. Made with freshly grated coconut and baked over the chulha, this bread has a unique, slightly sweet flavor and a wonderful crunchy crust. It's perfect for sopping up curries, serving alongside stews, or simply enjoying with a pat of butter and a cup of strong local coffee. All these dishes and many more owe their distinct flavors to the chulha. It's a cooking method that's steeped in tradition, but it's also a testament to the ingenuity and resourcefulness of Tobago's people. 
The chulha is more than just a cooking device. It's a symbol of Tobago's rich culinary heritage that continues to flavor its food, its culture, and its people. As our culinary journey through Tobago comes to a close, it's clear that this island is a food lover's paradise. This vibrant and diverse Caribbean gem has served up a smorgasbord of culinary delights, making it a delightful Epicurean odyssey. We've traversed the bustling food scene of Tobago, where street food and fine dining coexist in delightful harmony. We've savoured the best crab and dumplings, a must-try for anyone stepping foot on this island. The local eateries aren't just places to eat, they're portals into the heart and soul of Tobago. We've experienced the heartbeat of Tobago in its food, a rhythmic blend of indigenous ingredients and international influences. We've tasted the fusion of flavours from the spicy heat of curry duck to the subtle sweetness of coconut bake. Each dish tells a story of the island's rich cultural tapestry. We've indulged in the floating feast where dining meets the ocean. At the tiki craft, the sea is not just a backdrop, but an integral part of the dining experience. There's nothing quite like enjoying a meal while being gently rocked by the Caribbean waves. We've explored the luxurious side of Tobago's culinary scene, where fine dining takes on a tropical twist. Here, international cuisine is given a local spin, creating a unique gastronomic experience. We've delved into the traditions of Tobago, where the earthen clay stove known as a chulha is still used. The wood fuel chulha imparts a unique flavor to the food cooked over it, be it bread, curries, or the popular chula curry chicken. We've been treated to a plethora of local delicacies, green mango curry, dal roti, hops bread, baked chicken, and vegan choca, among others. Each dish is a testament to Tobago's culinary prowess and the island's love for food. From the sizzling streets to the luxurious dining rooms, from the floating feast at sea to the traditional chulha, Tobago offers a culinary journey like no other. So, when are you booking your ticket? Have you ever wondered what makes Tobago's food culture so unique and delicious? There's a certain magic to the cuisine of this sun-kissed island, a delightful fusion of flavors that can only be described as a sensory carnival. This culinary wonderland is the result of centuries of cultural intermingling, with influences from the indigenous people, the African diaspora, the Indian indentured laborers, and the European colonizers. Picture this, the soft rustle of palm trees, the rhythmic lullaby of the ocean, and a plate of food that tells a thousand tales. Each dish is a chapter, a delicious narrative of Tobago's rich history, and the interplay of cultures that have shaped it. First, we have the cheesy garlic potato pie, a comfort food that truly soothes the soul. It's like the familiar au gratin potatoes, but with a Tobagonian twist. Imagine a symphony of creamy, cheesy goodness, punctuated by the bold notes of garlic and the earthy tones of potatoes. This pie is a testament to the island's love for hearty, homegrown produce. Next, we delve into the stewed pigeon peas with rice, a staple that's steeped in tradition. This dish is all about balance. The nutty pigeon peas complementing the fluffy rice, the savory stew offset by the subtle sweetness of the peas. It's a humble yet powerful representation of the island's agricultural heritage. And finally, we have the macaroni salad. It may sound simple, but when done the Tobagonian way, it's anything but. It's a celebration of contrast. Soft pasta meets crunchy veggies, creamy dressing meets tangy relish. The macaroni salad is a testament to the island's knack for elevating simple ingredients into a masterpiece of flavors. Together, these dishes paint a vivid picture of Tobago's food culture, a tantalizing tableau of the island's culinary prowess. They are a testament to the power of food in narrating history, in bridging cultures, in evoking emotions. So are you ready to savor these tales of Tobago? Let's embark on a culinary journey to the heart of Tobago. Imagine a dish that reminds you of a gratin potatoes, but with a Tobagonian twist. Now let's embark on a culinary journey to the heart of Tobago. Our destination, cheesy garlic potato pie. This dish is a symphony of flavors, marrying the creaminess of cheese, the earthiness of potatoes, and the aromatic allure of garlic. To prepare this delicacy, you'll need some simple ingredients. Fresh potatoes, a generous handful of garlic cloves, a splash of milk, and of course, a good amount of cheese. The process is straightforward, yet it demands patience and love. First, the potatoes are thinly sliced and layered in a baking dish, 
Then a mixture of garlic, milk and cheese is poured over the potatoes, coating each slice with creamy garlicky goodness. The dish is then baked until it turns golden and bubbly. This savory pie is more than just a comfort food. It's a culinary tradition steeped in Tobago's rich food culture. And that, my friends, is the mouth-watering cheesy garlic potato pie, a staple of Tobago. What's a meal without a hearty side dish? Stewed pigeon peas with rice is a must-have in any Tobagonian dining table. This humble yet flavorful dish is more than just a staple. It's a symbol of Tobago's rich culinary heritage. Let's start with the pigeon peas. These small round legumes are a powerhouse of nutrients and flavor. When stewed, they transform into a creamy, earthy delight that pairs perfectly with the nutty and comforting taste of rice. Now, on to the process. The pigeon peas are first soaked overnight to soften them. They're then simmered gently with a medley of aromatic herbs and spices. The result? A robust and hearty stew that's brimming with flavor. Meanwhile, the rice is cooked separately until it's fluffy and tender. It's then folded into the stewed pigeon peas, allowing the grains to soak up all the wonderful flavors. What makes this dish so important in Tobago, you ask? Well, it's a testament to the island's resourcefulness and love for wholesome, home-cooked meals. The ingredients are simple, yet they come together to create a dish that's incredibly satisfying and deeply comforting. The beauty of stewed pigeon peas with rice lies in its simplicity. It's a dish that proves that sometimes the most basic ingredients can yield the most extraordinary flavors. Stewed pigeon peas with rice, a dish that tells a story of Tobago's vibrant food culture. Let's not forget about the humble macaroni salad, a simple yet delightful dish that completes our Tobagonian feast. Now the macaroni salad might seem a bit out of place amidst the rich, hearty flavors of cheesy garlic potato pie and stewed pigeon peas with rice, but it's this very contrast that makes it such an integral part of the Tobagonian meal. It's the palate cleanser, the refreshing interlude, the cool breeze on a hot, tropical day. The recipe is delightfully straightforward. Start with cooked macaroni, of course. Then it's a medley of diced bell peppers for a burst of color and crunch, onions for a slight pungency, and a generous helping of mayonnaise to bind it all together. Some people like to add a bit of mustard for a tangy kick, while others prefer it plain. The choice, as they say, is yours. But where does this dish come from, you ask? Well, it's a bit of a mystery, really. Some say it's a remnant of British colonial influence. Others argue it's an adaptation of American picnic food. Whatever the origin, it's been embraced by the people of Tobago as a beloved part of their food culture. It's a testament to the island's ability to take something foreign, something as simple as a macaroni salad, and transform it into something uniquely their own. There you have it, the classic Tobagonian macaroni salad, the perfect end note to our culinary journey. From the cheesy garlic potato pie to the wholesome stewed pigeon peas with rice and the delightful macaroni salad, we've covered quite a feast, haven't we? These dishes, each a culinary delight in its own right, are but a glimpse into the vibrant and diverse food culture of Tobago. The cheesy garlic potato pie, reminiscent of a French au gratin, showcases the island's flair for transforming the ordinary into the extraordinary. Then we have the hearty pigeon peas stewed to perfection with rice, a dish that embodies the warmth and vitality of Tobago's people. And let's not forget the macaroni salad, a delightful medley of flavors that adds a refreshing touch to any meal. These dishes, with their unique blend of flavors, pay homage to Tobago's rich culinary heritage. The island's food scene is a testament to its people's creativity and love for good food. So next time you think about Tobago, remember the flavors that make this island a true culinary paradise. Imagine the tantalizing aroma of spices wafting through the air, hinting at the culinary journey we are about to embark on. This is Trinidad, a bustling, industrious island where the sounds of sizzling pans and the rhythmic chopping of ingredients form the everyday symphony. Here, the air is always thick with the scent of food in the making, a testament to the island's rich culinary heritage. Our gastronomic voyage starts with the classic doubles, a street food staple that's as integral to Trinidad as, say, the steel pan or calypso. The soft, fluffy bara, a turmeric-infused dough, cradles a hearty filling of curried chickpeas, the ingredients for which include shadenbeni, garlic, and pimiento peppers. The chickpeas and dal have been soaked the night before, 
then seasoned with a medley of amcha masala, jeera, turmeric, and all-purpose seasoning. A bite into a double is a burst of flavors, a true embodiment of Trinidad's vibrant spirit. Next, we have the paratha roti, a flaky flatbread that's painstakingly crafted with layers of butter and Crisco. The dough is rolled folded and left to rise, creating a masterpiece that's crispy on the outside, soft on the inside. Then there's the curry conch, a seafood delight that's simmered in a rich aromatic curry, and the pork wallop, a meaty indulgence that's slow cooked until tender. Adding an Italian twist to the mix, we have the curry ravioli with shrimp, an innovative fusion dish that marries the warmth of curry with the delicacy of pasta. And to end our culinary introduction on a sweet note, we have the cherry coconut drops, a beloved island dessert that's as delightful to the palate as it is to the eyes. This is just a taste of what Trinidad's cuisine has to offer. Now with your senses ignited, brace yourself as we delve into the heart of Trinidad's cuisine. The magic begins with the preparation of paratha roti, a flaky, buttery delight. Picture yourself in the heart of Trinidad, surrounded by the bustling energy of a busy street. The air is rich with the tantalizing aromas of curry and coconut, and tucked away in a corner of this vibrant scene, an artist is at work. Their medium is not paint or clay, but dough, butter and Crisco. Their canvas, a humble kitchen counter. Their masterpiece, the paratha roti, the process begins with simplicity, with the rolling out of dough. But don't be fooled by the seemingly straightforward nature of this task. There's a finesse to it, a touch that only comes with years of practice. The dough must be thin, but not too thin. Even, but not too even. It's a delicate balance, a dance of sorts, between the hands of the artist and the yielding dough beneath them. Next comes the butter, a generous spread across the surface of the dough. This isn't just any butter, mind you, it's a special blend a secret recipe, a mix of butter and Crisco that brings a unique richness and depth to the paratha. This buttery mixture is what gives the roti its signature flaky texture, its melt-in-your-mouth goodness that keeps you coming back for more. Once the dough is suitably adorned with its buttery embellishment, it's rolled once again. This time it's transformed into a ball, a compact sphere of potential just waiting to be unleashed. But patience, dear listener, is a virtue. The dough must rest now, must sit and rise, and in doing so, allow the flavors to meld and the texture to develop. As the dough rises, it's as if the entire room holds its breath. The anticipation is palpable, the tension almost electric. This is the calm before the storm, the quiet before the culinary delight that is to come. And it's in these moments, these quiet interludes of waiting, that the true artistry of paratha roti making comes to light. It's not just about the ingredients or the technique, but the love and patience that go into every step of the process. The respect for the dough, the understanding of its needs, the appreciation for the butter and Crisco, for the richness they bring, the reverence for the time it takes to rise, for the transformation that occurs within. In the end, the paratha roti is not just a dish, it's a labor of love, a testament to the artistry and dedication of its maker. It's a symbol of Trinidad, a representation of the vibrancy and diversity of its people and their cuisine. And above all, it's a delicious treat, a flaky, buttery delight that is as much a joy to eat as it is to make. With our paratha dough set aside to rise, we move on to the next dish. Next up is the making of Trinidad's iconic street food, doubles. This delectable delight is as much a part of Trinidad's culture as its vibrant music and picturesque landscapes. Doubles are a charming blend of Indian culinary techniques and Caribbean flavors, resulting in a dish that's unique, delicious, and undeniably Trini. Let's start with the base, the doubles bara. This is not your ordinary bread. It's a special kind of flatbread that's crispy on the outside, soft on the inside, and has a distinct yellow hue thanks to the turmeric. The ingredients are simple, all-purpose flour, salt, yeast, sugar, turmeric, baking powder, and a key element, lukewarm water. The magic lies in the mixing and kneading, transforming these humble ingredients into a dough that will soon rise to the occasion. While the dough rests, we turn our attention to the heart of the doubles, the chana, or curried chickpeas. The chana is not simply boiled and thrown onto the bara. Oh no, it's a carefully crafted concoction that's simmered to perfection. 
the recipe calls for chickpeas and dal that have been soaked overnight. This not only softens the legumes, but also reduces their cooking time. Now let's talk about the flavor. Doubles aren't just about the texture, they're a flavor explosion in your mouth. To achieve this, we add a unique mix of chadenbini, garlic and pimiento peppers to the chickpeas and dal. Chadon beni, also known as colantro, is a herb that's native to the Caribbean and has a robust, pungent flavor that's somewhat similar to cilantro but much stronger. Next, we spice things up with amchar masala, jeera, turmeric, and all-purpose seasoning. Amchar masala is a blend of five spices that's commonly used in Trinidadian cuisine. It imparts a distinctive, earthy flavor to the dish. Jeera, or cumin, adds a warm, nutty note, while turmeric gives the chana its characteristic yellow color. The all-purpose seasoning ties everything together, enhancing the flavors and adding a subtle hint of savoriness. Once the chana is simmering away, we return to our dough. It's now risen and ready to be transformed into bara. The dough is divided into small portions, which are then rolled out into thin, round discs. These are then deep fried until they puff up and turn a beautiful golden brown. The final step is assembly. A piece of bara is placed on a piece of wax paper, a generous helping of chana is spooned onto it, and then it's topped with another piece of bara. The doubles is then folded up like a sandwich ready to be devoured. Making doubles is not just about cooking. It's a dance, a rhythm, a ritual. It's about the joy of creating something from scratch, the anticipation of waiting for the dough to rise, the satisfaction of seeing the bara puff up in the hot oil, and the delight of biting into a freshly made doubles with the soft bara, the spicy chana, and the contrasting textures creating a symphony of flavors that's truly out of this world. With our doubles bara and chana prepped, it's time to delve into the world of seafood. Now, we venture into the realm of seafood preparing a fragrant curry conch. With the hustle and bustle of Trinidad streets as our backdrop, we're about to embark on a culinary adventure with an oceanic twist. Today, we are creating a seafood masterpiece, a dish that carries the rhythm of the waves and the warmth of the Caribbean sun in every bite, the curry conch. The conch, a large marine gastropod, is a treasure of the sea, known for its tender, slightly sweet flesh. It's a beloved ingredient in Caribbean cuisine, and in Trinidad, it's often cooked in a spicy, aromatic curry that's a delightful dance of flavors on the palate. Now let's start cooking, shall we? First and foremost, we need to prepare our conch. It's essential to clean it thoroughly, removing any grit or sand that might be hiding in its crevices. Once that's done, we'll cut it into bite-sized pieces. These morsels of seafood goodness will soon be soaking up the flavors of our curry, transforming into a dish that's a true delight to the senses. Next, we turn our attention to the curry. In Trinidad, curry is more than just a dish. It's a symphony of flavors, each playing its part to create a melody that's simply irresistible. We start with a base of onions, garlic, and hot peppers, sauteed until they're soft and fragrant. This forms the backbone of our curry, providing a depth of flavor that sets the stage for the rest of the ingredients. Now we introduce the star of the show, our curry powder. This isn't just any curry powder. It's a blend of spices including coriander, cumin, turmeric, and fenugreek, each lending its unique flavor to the mix. We'll toast the curry powder in the pan with our sauteed onions and garlic, letting the heat release the spices aroma and deepen their flavors. Then it's time to add our conch. We'll stir it into the curry, coating each piece with the flavorful sauce. This is where the magic happens, as the conch starts to absorb the curry's flavors, taking on a savory, spicy character that's simply divine. We'll then add some water, just enough to cover the conch, and let it simmer. As it cooks, the conch releases its juices into the curry, enriching it with its sweet oceanic flavor. It's a slow process, but one that's worth every minute, as it allows the flavors to meld together, creating a dish that's greater than the sum of its parts. While our curry is simmering, we can't forget about the other ingredients that make this dish so special. A handful of chopped tomatoes adds a touch of sweetness and acidity, balancing out the curry's heat. Fresh thyme lends an earthy note, 
while a squeeze of lime juice brightens up the dish, adding a burst of citrusy freshness. Finally, after all the ingredients have had time to get to know each other, our curry conch is ready. It's a sight to behold, with its vibrant yellow colour and the tantalising aroma of spices wafting up from the pan. The conch is tender and flavourful, having soaked up all the goodness of the curry. It's a dish that's as beautiful as it is delicious, a true testament to the culinary prowess of Trinidad. And there you have it, our curry conch, a seafood delight that's a celebration of Trinidad's vibrant food culture. It's a dish that tells a story, a story of a place where the sea and the land come together, creating a cuisine that's as diverse and colorful as the island itself. Our curry conch, simmering with flavor, leaves us free to turn our attention to the next dish. Adding an international twist to our culinary adventure, we now prepare curry ravioli with shrimp. Prepare to tantalize your taste buds as we bridge the culinary gap between Italy and Trinidad with this fusion dish. The Italian classic, ravioli, gets a Caribbean makeover with the addition of curry and shrimp. The result is a splendid blend of flavors that are sure to take your palate on a joyous journey. Firstly, let's dive into the ravioli making process. It's an art form, really, akin to the craftsmanship of a sculptor. The base of any good ravioli starts with the pasta dough. Flour, eggs, a dash of olive oil, and a pinch of salt are all you need. Don't forget to knead it well. A supple, elastic dough is the secret to perfect ravioli. Once the dough is ready, it's time to let it rest. This pause allows the gluten to relax, making the dough easier to work with later. While our dough takes a well-deserved break, we move on to the filling. The star of our filling is, of course, shrimp. Shrimp is a staple in Trinidadian cuisine, and it's the perfect partner for our curry ravioli. The shrimp is lightly sautéed with a hint of garlic and a splash of white wine. We want to keep the flavors subtle here, allowing the shrimp to shine in all its glory. As the shrimp cooks, the kitchen fills with the aroma of the sea, a scent that conjures images of Trinidad's idyllic beaches. It's this very aroma, the essence of the sea, that will infuse our ravioli with an unmatched depth of flavor. Now, let's turn our attention to the curry sauce. This is where the dish truly becomes a fusion of Italian and Trinidadian cuisine. The base of the sauce is a blend of coconut milk and curry powder, creating an intoxicating aroma that is both exotic and comforting. A touch of turmeric gives the sauce a vibrant golden hue, while the addition of amchar masala, a Trinidadian spice blend, brings a depth of flavor that's truly extraordinary. As our curry sauce starts to bubble away on the stove, it's time to return to our pasta dough. It's been resting, and now it's ready to be rolled out. The dough is gently coaxed into a thin sheet, ready to be filled with our succulent shrimp. Each piece of ravioli is meticulously crafted, the dough folded over the shrimp filling and sealed with a crimped edge. It's a labor of love, but the result is worth every moment. Finally, it's time to cook our curry ravioli. The pasta is gently dropped into a pot of boiling water, where it cooks until it's perfectly al dente. You'll know it's done when the edges of the ravioli are tender, but there's still a slight bite to the pasta. It's a delicate balance, one that requires a keen eye and a patient hand. As the ravioli cooks, the curry sauce is ladled over it, bathing each piece in a blanket of creamy, spicy goodness. The combination of the tender pasta, the succulent shrimp, and the rich curry sauce creates a symphony of flavors that's truly a testament to the magic of fusion cuisine. Finally, it's time to serve our curry ravioli. Each plate is generously adorned with the pasta, the vibrant curry sauce pooling around each piece. A sprinkling of fresh herbs adds a pop of color and a burst of freshness, the perfect finishing touch to this culinary masterpiece. And there you have it, curry ravioli with shrimp, a delightful fusion of Italian and Trinidadian cuisine. It's a dish that's as exciting and diverse as the island of Trinidad itself. Each bite takes you on a journey, from the bustling streets of Italy to the vibrant beaches of Trinidad, all from the comfort of your own kitchen. So, next time you're yearning for a culinary adventure, why not try this recipe? It's a testament to the fact that sometimes the most unexpected combinations can result in the most delightful dishes. After all, isn't that what cooking is all about? 
It's an exploration, a chance to experiment with flavors and create something truly extraordinary. With our curry ravioli bubbling away, we turn our focus to the meat lovers. For those with a penchant for meat, we now prepare pork wallop, a traditional Trinidadian dish. In the heart of Trinidad, where the air brims with the tantalizing scent of spices and the rhythm of steel pans, there's a meaty delight that stands out, the ever so indulgent pork wallop. This dish is a testament to the island's rich culinary heritage, a melody of flavors that dances on the palate and leaves a lasting impression. So what exactly is pork wallop? It's a hearty stew-like dish brimming with tender chunks of pork, simmered in a rich aromatic broth, with an array of spices and local herbs lending it a distinctive character. It's the kind of dish that warms you from the inside out, a true comfort food that, when done right, can transport you straight to the bustling streets of Trinidad. Now the first step in making pork wallop is selecting the right cut of pork. We're looking for something with a good amount of fat to keep the meat juicy and flavorful as it cooks. A pork shoulder or pork belly would be ideal. Once we have our meat, we cut it into bite-sized pieces because the smaller the size, the more flavor it can absorb. Next comes the marinating process, an essential step that allows the flavors to penetrate deep into the meat. We start with a generous helping of green seasoning, a vibrant blend of fresh herbs, including chadonbeni, thyme and parsley, along with garlic and pimiento peppers. This green seasoning is the heart and soul of many Trinidadian dishes, and it's what gives the pork wallop its distinctive Caribbean flavor. With the green seasoning acting as our base, we then add a splash of soy sauce for depth, a bit of Worcestershire sauce for tang, and a spoonful of brown sugar to balance out the flavors. Finally, a pinch of all-purpose seasoning and a dusting of black pepper complete the marinade. Once everything is thoroughly mixed, we let the pork rest, allowing the flavors to meld together. The longer the pork marinates, the more flavorful it will be, so patience is key here. While the pork is marinating, we prepare the other ingredients. We chop up some onions and bell peppers, mince a few cloves of garlic, and dice a hot pepper or two, depending on how much heat we want in our dish. These ingredients add texture and depth to the pork wallop, creating a harmonious medley of flavors. Once our prep work is done, it's time to get cooking. We heat up some oil in a heavy bottomed pot, then add the pork, browning it on all sides. This process helps to seal in the juices and gives the meat a beautiful, caramelized exterior. After the pork has browned, we remove it from the pot and set it aside. In the same pot, we saute our onions, bell peppers and garlic until they're soft and fragrant. Then we add back the browned pork along with the diced hot peppers and give everything a good stir. Next, we add enough water to cover the meat and bring the pot to a simmer. Then the magic happens. As the pork wallop cooks, the flavors meld together, creating a rich, savory broth that's deeply satisfying. The pork becomes tender and juicy, absorbing the flavors of the broth, while the vegetables soften and release their own flavors into the mix. After simmering for a good couple of hours, the pork wallop is ready. The meat should be fork tender, the broth thick and flavorful, and the aroma absolutely mouth-watering. We serve it hot, perhaps with a side of paratha roti to mop up the delicious broth or over a bed of fluffy rice. And there you have it, the meaty indulgence that is pork wallop. A symphony of flavors, a testament to Trinidad's rich culinary heritage and proof that sometimes the simplest ingredients can create the most delicious dishes. Our indulgent pork wallop brings us to the sweet finale of our cooking adventure. To conclude our culinary journey, we prepare cherry coconut drops, a sweet Trinidadian treat. What's a meal without a sweet ending? And what better way to conclude our gastronomic expedition than with a traditional Trinidadian dessert? The cherry coconut drops. These delightful morsels are a symphony of sweet and tropical flavors that dance on your tongue, leaving a lingering taste of the Caribbean. Imagine a treat humble in appearance but rich in taste that brings the magic of the Trinidadian islands to your palate. The cherry coconut drops are akin to tiny flavorful islands floating in a sea of sweet syrup. They're a testament to the simple and beautiful art of Trinidadian sweets where every ingredient has a purpose and together they create something truly special. The first step in creating these delightful drops is to gather our ingredients. 
We'll need some fresh coconut, the star of our show, and some maraschino cherries for that pop of color and an added layer of sweetness. To create the syrup, we'll use brown sugar and a bit of water. The ingredients are simple, but when combined, they create a medley of flavors that is nothing short of spectacular. The process begins with the coconut. We grate the fresh coconut, releasing its sweet, tropical aroma. There's something about the scent of fresh coconut that transports you straight to the beaches of Trinidad, with the sun shining brightly and the waves gently lapping at the shore. Next, we turn our attention to the maraschino cherries. These cherries, with their vibrant red color and sweet taste, make the perfect contrast to the subtle sweetness of the coconut. We chop them into small pieces, each chop releasing a burst of cherry sweetness into the air. With our main ingredients prepared, we move on to making the syrup. The brown sugar and water are combined and heated until the sugar completely dissolves. The syrup bubbles and thickens, and as it does, it darkens in color, developing a rich golden hue and a deep caramel-like flavor. Now it's time to bring it all together. We add the grated coconut and chopped maraschino cherries to the syrup, stirring gently to ensure that every bit of coconut and cherry is coated in the sweet syrup. The mixture is then cooked until it thickens and the syrup is absorbed. The result is a sticky, sweet mixture that's ready to be shaped into our cherry coconut drops. Using a spoon, we scoop out small portions of the mixture and shape them into small rounds. Each round is then placed on a tray lined with parchment paper, ready to be cooled and hardened. As they cool, the syrup hardens, transforming the sticky mixture into firm, sweet drops. The cherry coconut drops are then left to cool completely. As they cool, they continue to harden, turning into a sweet treat that's chewy, crunchy, and absolutely delightful. Each drop is a bite-sized piece of Trinidad, a sweet memento of our culinary journey. These cherry coconut drops are not just a dessert, they are a testament to Trinidad's rich culinary heritage. They represent the simplicity and creativity of Trinidadian cuisine, showcasing how a few simple ingredients can be transformed into a delightfully sweet treat. They are a perfect ending to our gastronomic journey, a sweet reminder of the diverse and flavorful cuisine of Trinidad. As we take a bite of the cherry coconut drop, we taste the sweetness of the syrup, the subtle flavor of the coconut and the burst of cherry flavor. It's a moment of pure gastronomic joy, a sweet finale to our culinary exploration. With our cherry coconut drops ready, we have successfully journeyed through the heart of Trinidad's cuisine. We've journeyed through the bustling streets of Trinidad, experienced the vibrant flavors and textures of its cuisine, and prepared an array of dishes that truly capture the island's spirit. Our voyage began with the art of paratha, where we discovered the delicate balance between butter and Crisco, kneading it into the dough and letting it rise. The outcome was a flaky, buttery roti, a staple of Trinidadian cuisine that's as comforting as it is delicious. Next, we navigated the intricacies of doubles, a street food delight. With a base of bara made from all-purpose flour, salt, yeast, sugar, turmeric, baking powder and lukewarm water, we added a flavorful mix of chickpeas, dal and split peas. The addition of chaden bini, garlic, pimiento peppers, amchar masala, jeera, turmeric, and all-purpose seasoning brought this dish to life, creating a symphony of flavors that danced on our tongues. We then plunged into the seafood delights of curry conch and shrimp, bringing the taste of the ocean to our plates. The tender seafood simmered in a hearty curry made for a dish that was a feast for both the eyes and the palate. Our culinary journey took an unexpected turn with an Italian twist, curry ravioli. This fusion of Italian pasta with traditional Trinidadian flavors resulted in a dish that was both familiar and exotic, a testament to the island's multicultural heritage. We couldn't forget the meaty indulgence of pork wallop, a hearty dish that was as satisfying as it was flavorful. And finally, we ended on a sweet note with cherry coconut drops a dessert that encapsulated the tropical flavors of the island. Throughout this journey, we've explored the rich culinary traditions of Trinidad, each dish telling a story of the island's history, its people, and its vibrant culture. 
The joy of cooking is not just in the eating, but in the process itself, in the discovery of new flavors, techniques, and traditions. With the aroma of our dishes still lingering in the air, we bid you farewell, hoping you'll join us again on our next culinary adventure.